Hi there. I'm Aaron and welcome to the Cult of Cinema. This is my movie library and uh, today we're doing a little collection video. We're going to talk about, uh, unfortunately we lost one of our uh, one of our greats today and uh, I'm going to give you my top picks on of his films. You're going to notice the beard is gone right now and basically that's because normally when I go to do my beard after a while it'll get too thick and I'll just like trim it out by going to the barber. And couldn't do that this time so I just shaved it down and I'm gonna let it grow back again naturally because I miss my beard I so miss my beard and I hate being clean shaven it's not something that suits me very well so it's it's really really weird I apologize hey there Jay well hey there Mark so pretty good I mean like we're uh, I'm working from home still uh, where my better half is you know still recovering from like the uh, the cold that she has uh, luckily it wasn't like as far as you know it wasn't virus which is good uh, so uh, <clears throat> we're keeping things like pretty much isolated and keeping it inside if we need to get anything well we order it in like uh, groceries or med medicine stuff like that Friday the Blu-ray set that's well it hasn't been officially confirmed yet Jay but pretty much it is I mean like We've heard, we've heard leaks from like a couple actors, like it's been leaked from Adam Marcus as well. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully you're doing well as well there. I'll, hopefully all you guys are doing well. So what I did today, <laughs> I know, I feel awkward without my, I am not a person that ever likes to be clean shaven. Uh, I have no chin for it. But, uh, I just called her. It drives me. It really does. Today we lost a, a, uh, a, a good one. We lost Stuart Gordon who did many of uh, many great films and some of my favorites. Unfortunately uh, we lost a couple of people today actually but we announced for Vinegar Syndrome and Severin films on Friday so we're going to be doing a video about that by the way just to let you know. <clears throat> we'll be taking care of both the Vinegar Syndrome and the, and the Severin sale. We'll be, uh, Severin announcements. See, we haven't had a good Friday 13 box set yet. That's the thing. Uh, some people like look towards that the steel box set as a good box set. I didn't buy that. I'm the biggest Friday 13 fan you're ever going to see, uh, and I didn't buy the steel box set because I really didn't like it. I didn't like the look of it. I didn't like the way it was put together. Uh, oh, good. I, I, the bomb is a fantastic film. I, you know, I don't like looking at myself regularly, but I hate looking at myself when my when I'm shaved. Uh, I feel very self-conscious like in all and all blunt honesty I do and I will until a couple days from now my beard starts is growing up more actually I would have been on here yesterday but I had a huge uh, migraine ended up like finishing work and then going straight upstairs falling asleep and waking up like later on in the night yeah Rick Ricky rest in peace Stuart Gordon one of them have rad yeah one of them's got it See, the well, they already said, uh, Adam Marks has said that the uncut version of Jace Goes to Hell is going to, oh, there we go, is going to be done. And some people actually haven't seen the uncut version of Jace Goes to Hell. It came on DVD. It didn't actually come out on uh, on Blu-ray ever. Even in the new, you know, that big box that cost around 100 and something bucks? Yeah, that didn't have it. Uh, neither did the $24 box set because obviously that was only the Paramount films. Uh, so I'm going to, I got a huge collection of like movies here I've only done the first two rows as far as I know we'll see how it goes so if you guys like the collection video we'll do, we'll do more of it uh, but uh, if you don't we'll finish it right there oh you watch that uh, I yeah I mean I didn't get to do for those who don't aren't, aren't on my Instagram or on, on my Twitter uh, I'd suggest following my, my Instagram more than my Twitter my Twitter is where I, want, I talk about all kinds of other stuff, uh, no, but uh, but I did a short video on both of those uh, to uh, let you, to basically to to uh, talk about like uh, YouTube uh, and uh, to give my give a shout out and a thanks to all the essential workers out there that are going out there every day and doing everything that they need to do uh, so that we can have a decent uh, 
so it can be decent here for everybody else. Uh, and uh, I did like uh, I just talked about my uh, my podcasts that I plan on making, and I will be talking about that down the road as well. I got a lot of questions on that uh, from uh, from people. Actually, I got a lot of comments on that over the last day. So hopefully that means you're interested. Anyway, there are four Stuart Gordon movies that I have like right in my collection that I can grab right now. Like I know I got the Gun over there and like other stuff like that. I'm getting there, Alan. Not there yet, but I'm getting there. Uh, but uh, four like Stuart Gordon movies that stand out to me. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to get into the horror collection, by the way. And that I recommend that everybody should have in their collection is. Uh, I'm going to leave my favorite one to last, actually. Is, uh, is Castle Freak. How many strength the kids? Yeah, he did. He worked on the TV show with that. Uh, which is a fantastic film, by the way, which too many people have not yet seen. But excellent film. This is the 80 Films edition of it. Of course, the classic reanimator. From Beyond, which I actually love more than reanimator. I'm, I'm weird that way. And my favorite Stuart Gordon movie of all time, not, which is not going to be a surprise to anybody here, Dolls. I love this film. And this is one where I, if I look in somebody's movie collection and they don't have Dolls, I say, pick up Dolls. Yeah, you kind of got to have Dolls. It's a really, really good. Um, oh. Thank you, Alan. I do not like to say shave for very long, so hopefully my beard grows out pretty quickly. It was, I was almost in, in slight tears as I was shaving and like I, all the hair was like coming down and I'm like oh, yeah anyway today I'm doing the horror collection uh, well part of it this is the first part of the horror collection so we're gonna get a wide range of films here if there's any that you're particularly interested in you want to talk about as always there's no time limit on each film or anything like that so we can talk about uh, some of the films here and uh, you're going to get like a lot of different stuff. So, and I'm sticking with the DVDs first because I have a very eclectic horror DVD collection. And we'll start with one that came from uh, Full Moon, right? Yeah. Under their Shadow Entertainment banner. James in the Witch House and the Black Cat. Oh, I don't have Fear Itself yet. I used to have it, but I, unfortunately that's one that I had to end up selling to get out of here. Well, to get out to St. John's, which eventually got here. Got a little bit of tea. I was in a podcast, so we need water. <clears throat> All right, so this is Bleed. Uh, if you're, uh, this is a slasher film and has like a typical like scream type of look to it on the uh, cover, that is. Now, Bleed is done by Shadow Entertainment, which is a division of Full Moon when Full Moon had lost the rights to their, to their big characters like Puppet Master and all that, that type of stuff. That's why you end up seeing a Pup Master movie on Sci-Fi Channel, which had nothing to do with the rest of the films. Now, this one right here uh, is a slasher film. What's interesting to note is that Charles Band doesn't like slasher films, like at all. So to see a slasher film, hey there, Brian, come out in like uh, from Charles Band was quite the thing. I mean, it does utilize a lot of the uh, like kind of cool slasher tropes. I don't have a Pup Master. I used to have a Pup Master box set, but I gave it to my uh, to my kitties. I'll get another one down the road because they're huge fans and they uh, definitely deserve it. My oldest has a almost a complete collection of Pup Master comics, actually, the newer comics that are out there. So Debbie Rashan is in this one as well. Uh, well I have also special appearances by Julie Strain, Frank Stevens, and Lloyd Kaufman. You like? The, I, I love the first. I love the first two, and I kind of like. The, and I like third one. But this is an interesting little one. Uh, it's kind of lower budget in the full moon type way, but it uh, definitely still fits in. And it was done by written by Devin Hamilton, who did a bunch of that stuff. Oh, you listen, is this your first time listening to it? The Blood Harvest and Incubus one. If you like the podcast that I did with with Just to This, um, let them know, uh, rate it, and. Uh, Give me a good rating, so hopefully I'll, I get to be back on there again. <laughs> Masters of Horror. So this is a double feature. Uh, this is Cherry Falls and Terror Tract. And we all know Cherry Falls. It's the one where uh, basically uh, 
the, the killer is killing virgins. Thank you for listening to it, by the way. And uh, the owl are in a kind of decide I have a big orgy to lose their virginity. Uh, it, the, it's a comedy. It's not really done in a, in a raunchy way. Actually, it's very, very tame for like the subject matter that you think. It's actually a fairly tame film. I don't remember if there's any new deer for, or much at all uh, because it was very, it was cut down a lot. Uh, this is John Ritter in Terror Tract, and I think this one's an anthology. It's a long time since I've seen Terror Tract, actually. I'm pretty sure Terror Tract's an anthology. <laughs> right on. Okay, next up is Zoe Zodana in the remake of Rosemary's Baby. Can I be honest with you? I haven't watched this one yet. I, uh, I got it because I love Zoe Zodana, and uh, I like Rosemary's Baby, so... I'll eventually get, now that I'm home, I'll eventually get around to this. I bought it at a uh, flea market for a buck. Next up is one of those things that everybody hates. But it's a great movie, but it's Snapper Cases, which I don't mind. And this is Michael, Michelangelo Antonio, Antonio's Blow Up, which is a fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, I do recommend that you check it out. I, uh, I'm a huge fan of this one here. We can see David Hemmings in this one, uh, Vanessa Redgrave, Sarah Miles, great cast. There was a TV sequel to Rosemary's Baby. I remember it, actually. Uh, it's like after he's all grown up. I can't remember the name of it right now. But, uh, but yes, that's, that is 100% true. It's not the greatest. It's a TV film. And you see, sometimes with these snapper cases, you could have like neat little artwork on the inside, which I actually do dig. Look at this neat artwork, Scholar. Be won over by the artwork on the inside of the snapper case. Yeah. <laughs> well, how's that end? I, looked, I think there's like somebody's hit, hit by a car. So I can't remember. I kind of remember the ending, sort of, but not a lot of the film. It kind of wanted to be the omen, I think. Uh, like, if I was a puppet, like anything. Uh, Good callback, by the way. Deep cut, because uh, I haven't seen that in ages. That's something that doesn't need a Blu-ray, though. I would buy it. True serve else. I do not have that film, Alan. Uh, this is House of Wax. Of course, I have like the Blu-ray 3D edition of this one, but I do love this cover. I definitely want the Criterion blow up. As yes, whenever I, I come across like uh, horror DVDs, I usually tend to go on, I'll buy them. Uh, even if I have already have the uh, the films, or if I want to get the films, I'll have them. Okay, I'll get this cheap edition, and eventually I'll get the uh, Criterion or Scream Factor, whatever editions out there. Now, this is a movie that I saw uh, when I was coming back from Montreal from a uh, from a horror convention. I watched this one here called Good Neighbors, and it was actually really good. As you can see, I got it from the Dollarama, not even open. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a uh, a film like like think I think it was filmed. If I'm not it's probably Montreal, actually. Because it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it. I, I've got to open it up because I haven't seen the... Uh, there's a deleted scene, apparently, which I haven't seen, so I I want to check it out. It's basically about this... Uh, yes, yeah, it's Montreal. Uh, Spencer and Lewis are two neighbors through the winter of 1995 Montreal. It's really cool. It's actually very suspenseful. Very well done. If you haven't seen Good Neighbors, it's actually worth the watch. Okay, here's one that I like. A lot of people don't like this one. I'm a huge fan of it. I've watched it several times, and then I went out and I bought the uh, the Blu-ray at Walmart, sorry, the DVD at Walmart, because because uh, I do like this movie so much, and uh, I did like the original as well. So the original is really good. Uh, the, I like I like the remake, um, and that is Knock Knock with Eli Roth. <laughs> you haven't even seen what I thought. Um, so Knock Knock is actually. A one in Eli Roth film that a lot of people for some reason don't like and I really haven't been able to figure out why I um, I dig it. I mean Keanu Reeves does a good job in this one and basically it's uh, it's based on a uh, God, what's the name of the original film? What if they say in the back here? They probably don't actually because most people don't even know this is a remake um, but basically these two girls uh, come and knock on this guy's door while he's while his family's away and the um, they kind of get their way in and seduce him and kind of pretty much destroy his life. Um, 
There was an original one of this done as well, done back in the 70s, I think. But this is the more modern day Eli Roth one, and I actually did like it, liked it a lot. But, but Canary's actually one of the nicest guys out there. It's such a shame. <laughs> hey, Dave. Next up is one that I ended up picking up during the whole like uh, Halloween thing on the, at the Dollarama time, and that is The Damned, which I have to get around to. I don't think I've seen this one, but uh, hopefully it's good. What do I think of Hostel? Actually, it's a well done film. Uh, I'm not a big on the whole torture porn genre. It's not, it's not, not my bag, as Austin Powers would say. But uh, I cannot deny the, the, the fact that Hostel was, was definitely well plotted. Uh, yeah, definitely, please make sure you like the video. That's a, that's a very important part when it comes to the channel, uh, especially if you saw my uh, Instagram or, uh, or Twitter. Um, and you still don't like my video. Um, it's it's a huge thing in order to uh, to keep the videos going. Yeah. Uh, so hostile basically, I, I the first time I saw hostile, it really disturbed me. I like, I mean, I as in, I saw hostile. I bought hostile at a uh, at a at a video store, and I uh, I watched it, and it just it got to me for some reason. I just watched it. It was by myself one night. It got to me. And I, I sold it to another video store the next day for a, for a loss, actually. And uh, a couple years later, I went back and watched it again. And I realized, why did this bother me so much? But uh, it did. But it, it's a good film. It's well done. Uh, it's definitely not for everybody, though. And uh, for a while, it definitely wasn't for me. But uh, quality filmmaking, I just didn't like it that much. You know, you're one of the few people that actually says they liked Hostel 3. I've been... I'll be honest. I have been able to get through Hostel Three because I've been uh, I've been wondering what's going to be like, but I've I've turned it on like three or four times, and then something always happens. And I got it like over there. I think on a Blu-ray, but I haven't really sat down and watched it. Not in its full anyway. I've start I've started it, but I just haven't finished it. I don't think maybe I have. Wait a second. I got to think about the, about the. There's three so far from Director of Intruder, and Intruder is one of my favorites. There's three hostile films so far, as far as I know, unless I'm making another one. Ah, speaking of sequels, no trouble with the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Scanner's The Showdown, uh, which is kind of one of the, is this one of the Scanner's Cop ones? I think this is one of the Scanner's Cop ones. Pretty sure this one's the Scanner's Cop ones. Okay, I bought this one at a convention, and it is Grabbers, and I do have the poster of this one, actually. Actually, a poster looks actually nicer than this. Um, but it depends. If you didn't like the original scanners, it's probably going to be better for you because it's going to be more, uh, uh, more like direct-to-DVD, kind of straightforward type stuff. Uh, Pierre David is a uh, producer here in Canada. And he, direct, you know, he produced a lot of films, kind of like Roger Corman does. And uh, he does a lot of, like, low-budget stuff. And he did, like, the Scanners sequels and the Scanners Cop films. So he did, like, uh, he did those there. So if you saw Scanners Cops, The Takeover, or anything like that, that would be up here. Hey, welcome, Steve. That would, well, if you like, it's different. I mean, it's, it's Cronenberg Scanners is Scanners. Scanners sequels are straight to, straight to uh, DVD fare. Uh, but... You're looking at somebody that loves straight to DVD fare, so remember, like, take that into consideration. When I say yes, I actually think it's, I think it's really good. All right, so next up is them, the giant ant film, with another snapper case. Stop saying that, Alan. I'm not having trouble with my Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's, unless, is anybody else having any issues with the with the video at this point? Well, yeah, it's, it's be lower budgeted. Uh, I think they're fun. Uh, David Hewitt is in uh, in Scanners too. I think David Hewitt. 
Um, you know, the guy from Star Trek, uh, Star, Stargate, you know, Atlantis, and he did other stuff, but you know, that's what a lot of people know him from. There is them. And uh, this is, I love the cover on this. And again, see, you get interior artwork. See, snappers aren't so bad, Scalder. Excellent. <laughs> uh, one that I really want the Blu ray of. Um, like, seriously, want to get the Blu ray of. I only have the DVD, and it's. Um, and I was got it from Dollarama. It's not the best. Oh, sorry, Value Village. Hey, Eric, welcome, man. And that is the Dracula. Now, this is the first Dracula that I. Oh, them is like kind of. It's like. Them is like standard fun, kind of cheesy, like 50s monster, you know, giant monster stuff. But I find them really good, actually. Uh, now, this is like with, uh, with Frank Langella. Of course, he'd come off a run of playing Dracula on the stage at this point, and um, it shows in the film. Uh, them is a, uh, yeah, yep, this is a 50s film, I think, 50s or 60s. <coughs> kind of black and white fair. It's so less dusty down here. But this is a gorgeous film. I watched this in theater when I was a kid, and uh, this is the Dracula film that I kind of fell in love with, like, before, like, I liked Lugosi and that, but this was the one that was for me. <laughs> now, this is a horrible cover for this one, but uh, it's the only edition that I got so far. And there's a new one coming out, a Blu-ray coming out. Kate Gilligan? Uh, I think so, Jimbo. I have to really look, and I can't really, can't really tell, but it's been a while since I've seen it. I'm waiting. Kate Gilligan, yeah. Uh, I think she is. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the one she's in. I got a couple of directors here. You'll see some others through. This is Captain Cronus Vampire Hunter, which I think is ahead of its time. Uh, great film. Yep, Frank Langella from who played Skeletor. He was an amazing, like Frank Langella, amazing actor. Uh, when they redid like, uh, what's the name of it? Lolita, and he played like that creepy role. He did such a good job. This. Ignore the horrible cover. This is actually a really good film. It's coming out on Blu-ray from Screen Factory, so I do want to get that one down the road. Except as I know it did last summer. I actually really like this one. It's a slasher film. Great. Yeah. Hey, Danny. Here is The Legend of Hell House. And yeah, definitely one to have in your collection. Uh, great screenplay by Richard Matson for this one right here. Uh, Ronnie McDowell, Pamela Franklin... Uh, Gail Hunnicutt's in this one. Uh, just, I like ghost stories, and if you like like well done ghost stories, then Legend of Hell House is definitely something that you're going to want to look into. Especially if you've never seen it. This one has Adam Driver. And that's Hungry Hearts. I don't think I've seen this one yet. I do like Adam Driver though, so I'll probably like it. Okay, here's a four pack that I got because I, I just wanted. There's one here that I wanted in particular. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, but it's, it's kind of a fun one. I love the Cubic Lolita. I, like, I would, that's one where I, I, I would have disagreed with you because I think that is uh, actually a really good underrated Kubrick. Now I'm going to be thinking that song in my head, Jay. So this is a four film collection. I think I got it to watch The Ward because I didn't see The Ward in years. It has The Ward, Spliced. Greystone Park and the Frozen on it. I like the picking up the, like these random four packs every once in a while. Um, usually they're put on like one or two discs. This one's on one disc, uh, but it's just, uh, it's just when you want to just have some horror movies to watch. Uh, sometimes you don't want to go grabbing a bunch of stuff, so you just grab one of the four packs. You just watch two or three on there. All right, so this is not such a good movie, and this is Return of the Living Dead Necropolis. It, it uh, it's a film. It's got people in it. Peter Coyote's in this one. Oh my God, is he really? Uh, it's been a while since I've seen this thing. Um, yeah, this is a Return of the Living Dead sequel. Uh, if you like Return of the Living Dead 1, you'd like Re Return of the Living Dead 2, and you love Return of the Living Dead 3, um, these are also films with those names. They're not good, but they're also films with those names. But because I had a friend that uh, actually gave these to me, uh, I actually also got this, which is Return of the Living Dead unrated limited edition box set he did actually uh that's stuart gordon unfortunately 
I actually mentioned him at the beginning of the channel here. Necropolis. Uh, Somewhere in Time is Richard Matheson. That's the guy. I love Somewhere in Time. It's one of my favorite like romantic films. This has Return of the Living Dead, Rave to the Grave, and again, another copy of Necropolis. Just to get that limited edition one. But, it's, but uh, yeah, Stuart, it's a sad... My, my kids love Stuart Gordon, and their favorite film is Goodall, so it's a favorite horror film, so, yeah. The Devil's Curse, another one of those that I... Did I watch? I think I started watching this. I don't know if I finished it or not. Uh, Oh, the original Return of the Living is amazing. Those two, though, Jimbo, you can probably pass on those, actually. Though they do have the girl from uh, Halloween 4, Ellie Cornell, one of them. No, he, I think he wrote it. He wrote, but I don't think he... I think he wrote? Uh, but, uh, Rich, I don't know if Matt, Did Richard Matheson ever direct? I don't think he ever directed. If he did, like, you guys definitely let me know. Stuart Gordon directed Castle Freak, which is a fantastic film. And I put it in like my four, four, four favorite Stuart Gordon movies where I said From Beyond, Dolls, Castle Freak, and Reanimator. With Dolls being my favorite. Uh, here's another one of those pickups that I'll eventually get around to, which is called After. I just love the cover. That was like a dollar. Castle Freak. And because I have the Halloween set, and these weren't on them, it is the theatrical editions of how Rob Zombie's Halloween and Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 because if you had to sit through Rob Zombie's Halloween Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 uh, then might I suggest please make it the theatrical editions because especially for part one it's so much better than what was done with the unrated edition with the director's cuts of these films not so good especially part one Part one doesn't make any sense in the director's cut. Like, not even joking. No sense. Um, especially his escape. Shag that, man. Shag that escape. Uh, Fortress is an amazing film, and it needs a good release. I don't think I got Fortress here. Damn, I kind of want to watch Fortress now. Shark Knight, which a lot of people didn't like, but I actually really dug this one. It's really cheesy, and it makes no sense. Like, the logistics behind what happens uh, actually doesn't make much much sense because there's different types of sharks there that would actually habitate in different types of water but uh, hey what the hell uh, it's just a fun film and it's nothing that I think anybody that picks a movie called Shark Night and expect to take it very seriously uh, no but it's a it's a fun one that one actually made it to the theaters I think here's one that needs a damn good blu-ray release and as, as far as I know I don't think it's gotten one yet Mark, you just gained cool points. Uh, is Death Machine. Open Water is more serious, though. Like, that's... Open Water, I don't really think of that as... Even though it's about shark... <coughs> I don't see it as a shark film, per se. Though it is a shark film. I, I like to cheese your shark films more. Yes, I do. <laughs> The Death Machine is fun, man. Like, look at the cast of Death Machine, right? You got, like, Brad Dourif in this one here. Um, well, you got Brad Dourif. Richard Brakes in it, by the way, who would, co you know, become infamous later on in, um, in a lot of Rob Zombie films. So, uh, look. Look at how cool this cover is. z Gray stuff is, is cool and fun to find. Like I said, I got an eclectic mix when it comes to my horror here. This is Dreamscape. Of course, I've updated this one to Blu-ray. I like the first couple of Sharknado films. The, uh, all of them are okay to watch, but after a while, it seemed like they were trying too hard to be cheesy and cult. Uh, when I, my idea is like, just let it flow naturally. If you're going to be a cult film, like film, you're going to be a cult film. Uh, but when you try to make it a cult film on purpose, it, it tends to uh, take away from it a bit. Is it really the last shark? Oh, I can check that out. There's an uncut German blue of Death Machine. See, we need one here in North America. I love this cover from Dreamscape. I got the original Dreamscape. We got on, on uh, Screen Factory as well. So uh, that one I upgrade. <clears throat> it probably was meant to remind you of that. The others, this is the... I love when I can find these like big box uh, DVD editions. This one is the Dimension Collector's Edition. The uh, Tudis one for the others. I actually really like this film. I'm a big Ghost Story fan. Uh, it opens up like... For people that don't remember the DVDs like this. 
Hey, Coach Retrini, welcome, man. <clears throat> Next up is probably my least favorite of all the Friday, Friday the 13th films that are right there. Do you know what my least favorite is? Can you guess what my least favorite is? See if anybody can before I show it. <laughs> and nobody guessed. <laughs> okay, so we'll just show it anyway. Uh, it's Freddy versus Jason. I, I really... This... It's a popcorn film at best, but at, you know, it's the least of the... Like, it's some decent stuff for Freddy, but um, Jason is non-existent in this film. Nowhere in this movie does Jason show up. Uh, Ken Kersner plays a character that looks kind of like Jason, but is nothing like the character of Jason, and uh, especially that fear of water thing. Yeah. Is my second least favorite? Uh, yeah, it is, actually. <clears throat> I, I had to think there for a second, but yeah. A lot of people love like Freddy vs. Jason. It's just me. I don't. I uh, well, I'm going to watch it with a bunch of my friends. Like they were like really into it. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. But I'm like, it doesn't really stand it. Oh, second worst. Yes. <laughs> no. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell is never going to be in my best collection. Ginger Dead Man. I hate those films. But the first one is probably the best out of all. Though I don't know the the one with the uh, when he goes back goes back to the 70s, the disco one. That's not too bad. Uh, Evil Bond. Way but way worse. Uh, stay away from me, Evil Bond. This is Demon Seed uh, with Julie Christie. I actually really like this film. Um, this is actually actually Demon Seed because if you buy this now, it's like a burn on demand type of thing. But uh, I'm super. I was out super stoked to find an actual copy of this one because it's it's out of print. The actual original copy was out of print, and now if you buy it, it's like just one of those on demand type ones. Uh, one of my better has favorite films actually uh, right here is Prana 2, which is actually kind of fun, kind of cheesy and cool. And I love the Grunion run in Prana 2, so really cool stuff. Uh, this is a horrible cover, and i got to get the Blu-ray of this one because she deserves it because she gets some cool stuff for me. But right now, uh, probably not so much. There's a, there's a Pink Panther set coming in that i got to get her. <laughs> James Cameron kind of is right, yeah. Now, the next one Scalder is going to love because, I'm just saying, because not only is it the Exorcist II, the Heretic, but it's the snapper case of Exorcist II, the Heretic. No, uh, Prana 2 was the one that had James Cameron working on it. Prana 1 was actually directed by... Guys, who was it again? Oh, God, God, God. Another kind of big director, but not a, not a James Cameron big. Look, you can see more artwork from this really crappy film. Where you, the person that you should feel sad about, and the blue the Blu-ray like I always is the burn on demand type ones. <laughs> no shame <laughs> is <laughs> is uh, is this, is it's taxi cab driver that really didn't deserve the death that it, but he gets the death. Pran two uh, probably early. Uh, if if not his first, um, he might have worked with Corn before, um, you know, doing like pickup direction or something like that. But I uh, I don't remember. I have to look back. I'd be lying if I told you. That I knew for sure. Last house on the left. This is the remake on rated edition. Actually, I did dig this one. I thought as a, as remakes go, this was fun. Of course, you can't get the visceral feel. Oh, Exorcist 3 is amazing. Uh, like, not just, like, okay. <laughs> it's it's incredible. Exorcist 3 is an incredible film. And uh, it, extremely well done. There's one scene in there, and everybody knows the scene. I won't even say what it is, especially if you haven't seen it. Uh, that does tend to give people a, a bit of a jump, which is actually pretty cool. All right, next up is The Frighteners. Uh, again, here's one that, uh, yeah, that a lot of people actually prefer 3 to the original. I I actually put a mom's on even keel. Based on Virgin Spring, that is true. This is a really cool one. I actually do dig this film. It's more of a comedy, uh, you know, Michael J. Fox. Um, does a great job in it. Next is Brotherhood of Blood. Peter Jackson, yep. That's, uh, that's Peter Jackson before he went to uh, doing all Lord of the Rings-y serious stuff. I don't know if I watched this one. 
I'm kind of nervous to watch this one. <laughs> I don't expect much, uh, but it's a Ghost House Pictures release, Ghost House Underground, so I had to check it out. Oh, you haven't seen uh, Frighteners? It's actually really fun. Uh, basic concept is that Mark J. Fox plays this con artist that uh, that kind of like, he's like, uh, he exercises houses of ghosts, but the deal is that he actually, the ghosts kind of kind of go with him. They're, he's friends with the ghosts. But there's like, it, then it gets, there's like a dark twist. It's, it's a very cool film. I wish you'd go back to it, but you know, sometimes. S and Man. Sandman, <laughs> in other words. Next up, we got the classic film. And Bailout. I don't have Bailout, actually. I would love that, though. David Hassoff and Linda Blair, it's not the only film they worked in. They worked in a movie called Witchery together as well. It's not a trilogy. Bad Taste, Meet the Feebles, and Brain Dead. Oh, the podcast. Which one? Just the Discs? I'm, I'm doing a podcast episode, like an episode on podcasts, actually, in the upcoming future. Heavenly Creatures is a fantastic film. Did you really? I Did you watch it yet? Ka. Uh, it's a movie with Sean Patrick Flannery, and it's got, uh, it's got birds. We'll, uh, we'll go with that. <laughs> 13 Eerie. I just love the cover. <clears throat> thing is, I don't have a lot of... My better half doesn't like a lot of the horror stuff, so I got to watch a lot of the horror stuff on my own. And uh, I kind of wish like some of my friends from like St. John's or my kids were around, uh, so then I could actually watch more uh, more horror. Um, but uh, yikes! Nope, not many horror fans are in here, unfortunately. To be honest with you, though, I kind of like watch. Well, I like watching stuff with my better half, and when I'm watching horror, I kind of like it on my own. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I'm a loner. <laughs> Fallen Destination 2. This is my favorite of the Fallen Destination film. Hands down, it's my favorite. And then uh, Fallen Destination 2, and then The Fallen Destination. I like that one. And then Fallen Destination. Then Fallen Destination, the first one. That's my, my top three. But you can't beat the car crash thing, this one. This basically, no, but there, this will make a good video game, though. Though it's, uh, it's not based on a video game. I'll do this full line there, then I'm going to put them back, then I'll start on the second line, because there's a whole other line we haven't looked into yet. The Tripper is a really fun little slasher film that deserves a better release than it's got. Uh, it is uh, unique, and pretty much it is a serial killer that's wearing a Ronald Reagan mask. I'm not even joking about that. You can probably double feature this one with, uh, what's the name of the movie? Um... Uh, the one that Vinegar Center put out, where, where the guys wearing the Nixon mask. Yeah, David Arquette, actually, yeah. Homeless guy from Back to the Future. Is that Buck Flowers? I can't remember right now. Uh, Eddie the Sleepwalking Cannibal. Another one of my many, like, Dollarama buys. Oh, God, this one broke. Uh, Shuttle, which I'm going to have to get a new case for. Look at this. See, look, look at that. How did that happen? I bought that brand new. There is Hostel Part 2. I know I got Part 2 of Hostel. I actually did like Part 2. Buck Flowers did so much. You do, like a lot of Vinegar Syndrome stuff played Buck Flowers. Um, you'll see a lot of Buck Flowers in the Vinegar Syndrome stuff. Uh, Valentine, this is the original Snapper Case release. Which, of course, is, again, scholars rushing out to buy this on eBay right now. And there's the kind of cheesy Midnight Sun. And the next film is by an unknown director that nobody's ever heard of before, and I'll be the first person to ever talk about this guy ever in any good or bad way. The Host. Uh, it, this is an excellent uh, South Korean film. Yeah, it is the writer book, Bikini Car Wash. And Bong Joon-ho. I know, it's an unknown name, especially to people that watch the Academy Awards. But, uh, yes, the host. This is the, this is the guy that made Parasite, guys. This is his film. And this is really freaking good. And if you've never seen the host, 
definitely, definitely check out the host. I'm going to put these over so they don't fall down. And then we're going to start on the rest. Wait, let me do a couple more first. There is Clive Barker's Book of the Dead, which I'm glad I, I picked up now because I, I didn't know if I had it. <laughs> uh, single White Female, which I really want to watch again soon, but I really want to get the Blu-ray edition of this one. Mary Riley, which isn't that great, actually, to be honest with you, but uh, good to have. I think I got the laser disc of this one as well. Cry Wolf, this is a slasher film. It's got John Bon Jovi, and it makes absolutely no sense, but it's fun as hell. <clears throat> the plot behind this one. Uh, yeah, like, you watch the movie and tell me, like, what you think of the plot behind Cry Wolf. It's a, uh, it's a slasher film. The least... I love Tales from Dark Side of the movie. Uh, yeah, it's a. I want. I kind of want it, Chris, to get. I want it to get like a Scream Factory type release because I would rewatch it. Actually, but John Bon Jovi is not a bad actor. Uh, he's good. For, he's definitely good for what he does. He's. I think his first thing was was in like Young Guns or Young Guns Two. He did like a cameo in there. Uh, but uh, but he's done acting since then, and he's not. He's definitely not a bad actor. Oh, the worst of the Black Christmas films right here. Black Christmas, Black Xmas, the 2006 one. Still decent, worth watching, but uh, not a good film. Uh, better film, The Windmill. Um, excellent Gore Peter Jackson film, Dead Alive. I kick ass for the Lord. That's, that's Dead Alive. That's that one. And a movie that I think is underrated that a lot of people, for some reason, didn't like. But, uh, you know, beware the stare of Mary Shaw. She has no children, only dolls. If you see her in your dreams, be sure you never, ever scream or she'll rip your tongue out at the seam. Dead silence. Really enjoyed this one. Uh, a lot of people don't like it. I actually really like this one. The dolls creep me out, too. It's Father and Pat Four. I, I did not remember that. Hold on, I'm right back, guys. I'm not leaving the room. I'm just going over there. Right. I know a neat little fact. When I initially started getting up during some of my videos, uh, to, it was partially to put things back so I wouldn't have so much after stuff to do when I went ahead along collection videos. But one of the reasons that I like to do it now is, uh, especially when, when I know it doesn't matter, uh, is I like to give you guys a chance to like just kind of chat amongst yourself and see where the conversation goes when I'm not here. Um, and I find that sometimes it leads to like some interesting conversations. So there, uh, a little bit of a, uh, a peek behind the, uh, 
behind the curtain, so, so, so to say. So there you go. Hillsworn Reds, that's really fun, Chris. I really like Hillsworn Red. That's one that I really want to pick up. <clears throat> ah, there you go, Hostel Part 3, unrated cut. Maybe I'll watch this one soon. I'm pretty sure I've seen this one. I just can't remember very well. But uh, I'm pretty sure I've, I've actually have seen this one. So yeah, I've seen it. Uh, next up is my DVD edition of uh, The Thing. Of course, I have the Arrow edition of that one, the limited edition version. But uh, it was cool back in the day to have this like really kind of loaded special feature edition of The Thing. I may give that one to my kids, actually. Um, I found this one at a... Uh, at a video store, not a video store, at a, uh, at a kind of a pawn shop that's closed down right now. And uh, it was, I, I always pick up retro media stuff whenever I can find it. Uh, God, I miss that pawn shop. And that is Blood Theater, actually. I actually have the the Blu-ray. The Vinegar Cinder put a really, really good Blu-ray with like uh, this one and, uh, and another one there as well. What well, film makes me really happy after I watch it? There's a few. Uh, there was one recently. So certain horror films make me extremely happy after I watch them. Uh, like, and could be completely honest with you. It really depends. But that's a good question. So, I have something pretty Japanese anime. Yeah. You can pretty much find a Japanese anime for almost everything uh, <laughs> out there. Summer Fear. Actually, this is a Wes Craven one. Blood Theater, Ricky, is uh, one put out by uh, by the guy that did Ghoulies. Oh, sorry, Ghoulies. They did, uh, what's it called? Hobgoblins. Uh, he uh, he directed that one as well. So it stars Mary, well, kind of stars Mary Warnoff. But the Vinegar Syndrome edition has two films on it. It's got uh, Blood Theater and The Visitants, both by, uh, by that director. And uh, definitely with the sales coming up, worth checking into, worth looking into. I, I'll buy anything with Mary Warnoff in it. I really like her. Uh, Summer Fear, I, I, then I'm not sure if this one's got a Blu-ray or not. If it does, I definitely got to pick it up down the road because I actually did like this one. This was a TV movie done by Wes Craven with Linda Blair, and uh, I enjoyed it. I think Lee Purcell's in it, too. Another kind of like Full Moon Shadow Entertainment one, uh, and that is Skinned Alive, which I haven't seen in a long time. But... uh. You know, this could be something that'll come out. Did this one come out? In, no, I don't think Vincent put this out yet, but I wouldn't be surprised because they do some. The I wouldn't. I, I like to see Vinerson get some of that, like kind of that cheesy stuff there. But the oh, it's gonna be interesting to see this Friday big video, guys. So be here this Friday because we're gonna be talking about the Vinegar Syndrome reveal. We'll be talking about the Seven reveal. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. Film that I like involving food. Involving food. Oh, eating Raul. That's not really food. Not food. Salt and green. Uh, my favorite. Uh, Tempopo. If uh, like food related movie. Tempopo. And no, no, no joke. Seriously. It's, are they doing their their own Blu-ray for that one? This is the guest. If you've never seen the guest, Ice Cream Man is a great one, Chris. <laughs> um, definitely check this out. So you're going classy, Scalder, but with Tampopo, there's there's different reasons for me liking that one. Just just putting that out there. Uh, <laughs> Two of Ox Murders. This is a remake by Toe Pooper. Uh, I, I really like this actually. Uh, good cast. You actually get a, a Sherry Moon zombie appearance in this one, not directed by her husband. And you know what? She doesn't do a bad job in it. Shows Vinegar Syndrome sale. You know you're gonna be here for that one, Brian. That's gonna be a good one. I'm actually, I was actually bummed the last couple of days because I realized my birthday's in six days, and everything that I had ordered for my birthday is now pulled back. So my birthday gifts that I said, okay, maybe they'll be a week or two late. That's okay. It'll be in April. Um, is, uh, they're probably not gonna be coming in until like May. <clears throat> and I usually have like one thing, like even, <laughs> uh, I even like 
but it's like this this is gonna be like one of those it's gonna be a depressing birthday guys <laughs> i'm hitting the uh, yeah the abandoned there we go uh after dark horror fest uh frontiers this is actually a really good one i actually like this one a lot this wasn't in the in either one of the box sets by the way this was one of the outside box at once there's every year they put it they used to put it after after uh take films to die for after dark horror fest box set and there would always be one usually a foreign film that was like you know too intense for the set and they'd put it like outside on its own and uh this uh was frontiers that was for that set dark ride which i recently showed on my channel did this one again is that who i think it is takishi shimizu uh the reincarna reincarnation and the hamiltons which i actually really liked uh, i think i might be the only person it was by the butcher brothers but i actually liked hamiltons a lot i also like the musical hamilton so it goes together i like dark ride you just gotta give another chance what's some good after dark films um nightmare man with tiffany Shepis. uh it's actually directed by rolf kaninsky who did there's something out there um i liked uh oh god where's it at not everybody liked but i kind of liked the uh was it the, the 13 deaths what the deaths of ian sloan um uh, i'm probably getting it wrong now hamilton's is really good i like that one it's a different one it's a very like uh uh probably more of the artsy ones dark rod if you like straightforward slasher films dark rise definitely straightforward slasher um there's a few frontiers is good as well the landlady talia shriver shriver so uh again i i was looking for this one for a long time actually so i was really stoked when i found this one i know it's just a cheesy like little film but it was one that uh, we, you know when you're looking for something dark ride is not awful you just do not like slasher films that's the thing let's be honest there it is so not an awful film if dark ride is awful you you have to see more films because there are way worse films than dark ride like slasher films ha Fr halloween 2 by rob zombie is his, his worst film uh <laughs> jason x which i actually really enjoy um really fun film it kind of divides the fan base uh it's a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously but uh and it's a good thing it doesn't because it's just one of those silly movies uh this is a cool release uh i think this was actually kind of cut but i really don't care because of the commentary that's on here it's hell high um it's a it's a tepid little film it's okay uh but it's got a commentary by joe bob briggs which makes it excellent and uh even if i only don't always agree with joe bob briggs i respect his work and he and i love his commentaries and stuff so i got the blu-ray edition of this one here now and that is and before the evil escapes of course this is in the curse collection from vinegar cernum which all you should own by the way because it's it's fun they're really fun next up is witchboard the possession and uh this is you would watch rob zombies halloween 2 over a dark ride no <laughs> which was the possession and of course candy man of course got the blu-ray this one from screen factory there's also a really good arrow edition if you were managed to get the limb edition that is that is wrong <laughs> that is so wrong do you know how much pain watching halloween 2 cost me do you know how many times i had to sit through it that has nothing to do with his music like <laughs> don't coast on the music because that has zero to do with rob zombie's music aside from the fact that it looks like a uh a tepid rob zombie music video <laughs> okay next one is uh the sequel to a movie that my that uh oh dude you can you can skip it uh <laughs> that uh my uh that i watched with my i watched the original with my kids and uh my better half and and the uh they hated it uh <laughs> so they never watched the sequel with me uh and that is ripper 2 letters from he from uh, what's the first one letters from hell so letter from within the second one is called i haven't watched this one a long time i don't remember it at, at all uh it, and i had my kids and my better half gave me such uh 
such a hard time over watching the first one that we never did get to see the second one together. I'll have to watch that one on my own or I'll kind of sneak it on a foursome. Speaking of movies that looked like they had really great potential but didn't, uh, turn, didn't pan out to be that good at all, uh, welcome to Soul Survivors. And this is the killer cover. Look how shiny this cover is. Do you know one thing you should know? You see, anytime like on a VHS or a, you see a lenticular cover or you see a DVD with an extra shiny cover, usually what that means is the movie's going to suck. Like, and uh, look, they even got like Elijah Dushku, which is the gorgeous Elijah Dushku. It's the killer cut. It's really shiny. Yeah, this is a bad film. This, this is, a, this is a, an extremely bad film. But uh, I got it because I like and watch extremely bad films. And of course, I had the other scanner one, so I got to have Scanner Cop. Yeah, his, his name actually used to go by Nicholas Coppola first, but he wanted to go out on his own and do his kind of, kind of forge his own way. So he took his name from the comic book character Luke Cage, uh, Heroes, from, Heroes for Hire. And of course, now the, uh, they had the, like, the show on Netflix for a couple seasons. So Nicholas Cage's name actually comes from Luke Cage. He's a huge comic book fan. Like me. Uh, Scanner Cop. This is a fun one. Uh, I think you'd dig this one a bit. Like uh, Even you, Brian, would like this one, I think. Definitely worth checking out. I don't think I know anybody that dislikes the next film I'm going to show. But we'll see if anybody does dislike. And this is one that, uh, it's an 80s film. It is an excellent film. It made, it, it made itself into a, they made a musical out of it. And the musical is excellent as well, by the way, with a killer kick-ass soundtrack. And that is Heathers. Heathers is incredibly well done. And it's both 80s and relevant now. The only thing I can say is, don't watch the new Heather's TV series that came out and lasted for one season. Uh, it will leave a bad taste in your mouth for the Heather's uh, film. But Heather's the film, fantastic. Heather's the musical, also amazingly fantastic with a great soundtrack. Uh, and look at, look at Manon Ryder there. I was so in love with her right there. And of course, I wanted to be cool like Christian Slater. Hey, Cinematech, welcome, man. This next up is Split, which was a good film, followed by a very bad sequel <clears throat> called Glass, which you can pass on because it's bad. It's really, really bad. M. Night, you were doing so good. Why, why did you go back to this? Why did you do that? Why did you make Glass and just like throw everything out the window? I don't have even many of those parody films, to be honest with you. So next up is Boogeyman. This was like a big deal back in the day. Uh, it was just a compilation of like different like films and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's James McAvoy in Split. He, he does a really, really good job in that film. Just Glass is horrible, like it's a horrible follow up in my opinion. Ah, uh, From Beyond is an excellent film. When I spoke to, uh, oh my God, don't, don't, don't fail me now. It's kind of film, isn't it? It's not on there. Jeffrey Coombs. Jeffrey Coombs. Okay. <clears throat> when I spoke to Jeffrey Coombs at a uh, convention, I said, I uh, uh, really love From Beyond and I liked his, his role in it. And he said, you know, I thought it was miscasted From Beyond. He's, he thought that Bruce Abbott should have had the role. But I actually, uh, I liked him in From Beyond. And Barbara Crampton, man. Like the village? I'm not. A, I, I, I couldn't get into the village actually. Like not like that's when I, I, did, I really couldn't get into it all, because um, <clears throat> it's so obvious. Maybe it's just maybe it wouldn't have been so obvious, and I wouldn't have been so focused on the twist. I could have enjoyed the film for what it was, um, but he puts these twist things in there, and he tends to like put them in like oh I do the twist I do the twist type thing. So people tend to focus on the twist. Sometimes that's to the not to the benefit of the film. Lay in the Water is one that I'm not a big fan of. My better half loves it. But uh, <clears throat> the next six films, they, uh, they kind of go together. <clears throat> and I will do a video actually on these films. One of these. I, I did videos, singular videos on these earlier on in my channel. And my kids actually talked about these. Oh man, you 
Yeah, you can you wait till a night when you're like, I don't know. Do you drink, Brian? Because uh, you might want to drink if you're going to watch the happening. Or uh, because it's, yeah. So, wrong turn. I like this one. I really do. This one, I like even Oh, it's bad. It's really bad. But it's bad in a fun way. Uh, there's things like you, you'll crack up with uh, Mark Wahlberg's acting. Uh, yeah. Then comes the worst of the Wrong Turn series, Wrong Turn 3. This is horrible. This was hard for me to get through. It's the only Wrong Turn film that I could, can't really get through. Wrong Turn 4, I actually like Bloody Beginning. Wrong Turn 5, Bloodline is actually kind of cool as well. And in almost a weird reboot of the series, Wrong Turn 6, uh, Last Resort, which they're, I think they're rebooting this thing again. But uh, I actually kind of have fun with this. Did you find that hard to get through? I liked Wrong Turn 6. It was different. It was weird. It definitely, definitely was not like the rest of the films, that's for sure. All right, next up is uh, Bedeviled. Oh, see, I like all of them except for three. Three is the one that gets me. I mean, Robert England. Robert England's fantastic. Next up is, and somebody told me to pick up this one actually at one point. Tom is a fantastic film, and that is Rabies. <laughs> what you got in a two pack with what? Day after tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, did you get it cheap? You got it cheap, right? Because we got a cheap fantastic. Like that's that's cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, not 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 good films. Like you like in my opinion, you might love. Them. Oh, uh, yeah, because, yeah, but, yeah, you're fine. I mean, like, they're they're okay watching. Uh, Drag Me to Hell. Actually, really was, uh, Sam Raimi came back to do horror, and I was so excited. And I was, I really, honestly, this is not one of my favorites. Uh, I was very disappointed. Speaking of being disappointed. Cheesy watches, yeah, cheesy fun. Hey, Simba Dave, welcome, man. I, I agree with you, Brian, on Derek Dragman Hill. And you like it better than that, it's gone. <laughs> um, return to Sleepaway Camp. Um, I always tell people, you know, if you go in, like, get a franchise, get the whole franchise type of thing, uh, I, I might, <laughs> say, might actually say not to when it comes to Return to Sleepaway Camp because this, this is pretty horrible. Pretty sad film. Okay, uh, less exorcism part two. Okay, this is another one. One of convention buys was in the house of the fly. It flies. I remember watching this one a long time ago, but I do not remember it very well at all now. Uh, I think I liked it. Sorority Row. This is the uh, kind of like a very loose remake. Of House on Sorority Row. Uh, House on Sorority Row is one of my favorite slash films of all time. Obviously, this wasn't going to compare. But that being said, this is fun. Uh, this is this is a lot of fun. And if Return to Sleepaway Camp gets a Blu ray before Sorority Row does, I'll be really pissed off. Because uh, this this has Scream Factory like written all over it. Uh, Oh, if you like 2012, then you're gonna you probably like it, because that's exactly what it's like. Great cast. I I did actually like who they had as the killer in this one. Carrie Fisher actually has a cool like part in that film as well. Here's one that I liked that a lot of people didn't like. By the way, Stage Fright. This is not the Stage Fright that you that you know. This is not the Italian Michael Suave one. This is Stage Fright with uh, the uh, with Meatloaf. It's a musical, and it's weird. 
and I'm not sure why I like it, but I just enjoyed, I just enjoyed it for what it was. It is not a good film, but uh, it's a, uh, it's one that for some odd reason I just I got into. All right, here is a mini series. This is the Triangle. This is not the really cool Melissa George film, but uh, actually mini series about the Bermuda Triangle, done by Brian Singer. Ah, that's not a name going here very often anymore, is it? But I had a decent cast, Eric Stoltz, Catherine Bell, Lou Diamond Phillips, Bruce Davison's in this one, uh, John Sloan is in here, Charles Martin Smith, Sam Neill. So great cast, it's just a creepy director. Death From Above, which of course is the, uh, this is a kind of a wrestling one. Cheesy fun. You got Kurt Angle, Sid Vicious, and Tom Savini. How can you, how can you go wrong with a movie with that, with that cast? It just screams Oscar, Academy Award winner. Jason Goes Hell. Does that one have a lenticular cover? Yep. Well, sort of. It's like very like lightly lenticular, man. Now, Jason Goes Hell, this was the one that everybody wanted for a long time because this was the only way to get the unrated cut. If you got, the, if you got that Steelbook Blu-ray uh, that came out with the, that big like expensive Friday 13th box set, Uncut version of J. Schools Hell is not on that set. The only way to get it is on DVD right now. There's a Blu-ray being made. As you can see, I bought this one at Blockbuster back in the day. Sid Vicious, you mean the wrestler? Oh, Death from Be from Above. Not a, not a, not a great film, man. But if you can get it for really cheap, it's fun. Next up is another horror four pack. That whenever I get these. Am I going to watch a train wreck? That would be WrestleMania. Yes, I am. I will uh, I will have a couple of drinks, and I'll have some snacks, and I'll know that's not AEW, which is the only good wrestling that's going on right now, by the way, uh, and uh, I'll watch what is WrestleMania. Because, man. Oh, no, no. That's Sid Vicious, as in also known as like Sid Justice. He was like a, a wrestler. Uh, good, cool story about, about uh, Sid Vicious is he was in WCW at the time, right? Uh, World Championship Wrestling. And he uh, was at a bar and he was like, uh, like really kind of like getting him, well, I think it was Iron Anderson. He was like really getting like really kind of up, like up against some type of thing. So uh, they had words and he almost came, came blows, right? So he, he goes out and he comes back. With like uh, I, the thing that you that you wash a car with <laughs> as his weapon, uh, I'm not joking. Uh, I think it's like uh, one of those car like window wash thing. It's hilarious. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, Sid Vicious got him in trouble. He actually get ended up getting fired later on. Um, big dude though, big dude. Uh, four pack of like kind of like I think it's mostly haunted house type stories. It had the Anvil haunting on it, which again is another. Movie that's got the Anvil name that really isn't about Anvil. 28 Days Later. Well, don't need to tell you what that's about. Classic. Bride of the Monster. Oh, yes. Oh. Ed Wood. Love Bride of the Monster. I love this cover, too. Image Entertainment release. Uh, Rates of Spring. Actually, not a bad one. And one type of like, remakes are actually pretty decent. Funny Games, uh, directed by the same guy, of course. I, I'm pretty sure it is, like Michael Hankley, right? Haneke, uh, oh, I could write. Yeah, directed by Michael Haneke, who, who directed the original Funny Games and, and you know, wrote it. It's pretty much like a, a straightforward uh, remake of the uh, of the original film. It's a really good one, though, with Naomi Watts and Tim Roth. And uh, Michael Pitt is in this one. Michael Pitt is one of those really, really great actors that uh that pisses everybody off and uh and just oh, it's so frustrating because he's so good he actually was in hannibal either season one or season two and the he pissed off people so much in that in hannibal too that they had somebody else take over his role when his face got eaten by the pigs and that is my panic here that's correct that is the director It's a good one, actually. You didn't like it? Actually, I, I really like that one, actually. 
Uh, this is the French release of Scars of Dracula, but actually it's uh, in English as well, by the way. And I got this because there actually had some decent features on here. And uh, at the time, there was no Blu-ray release of the film. Next up is a four-pack, and you know this one, Hatchet, No One Lives, uh, Horror Boy to Die, and Alphabet Killer. Uh, I really wanted to like Alphabet Killer more than I did. Again, it's Elijah Dushku, and I do like her a lot, but this wasn't the best film. But uh, it's okay. It's worth a watch. Hatchet's fantastic. Welcome, Ramon. Are you new here? Or am I just horrible with names? If you are new, welcome to the call. Uh, Four-pack uh, of the Psycho sequels. I got this, of course, for Bates Motel, the TV. Uh, this is not the Bates Motel, the TV series. This is the 1980s Bates Motel uh, pilot episode for a kind of Bates Motel TV series back then. And it's uh, pretty much uh, the love boat, but with like Norman Bates Motel. I'm not even joking. The hatch sequels are cool. I love Victor Crowley. That's my favorite. Oh, this, I, I like two and I like Victor Crowley. Three is my least favorite. Have you not seen the Psycho sequels? You're welcome. You're a new member of the cult. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this. Next up is the Cult Cinema Terror Cinema. And this is a fun little 12, 12, 12 pack, right? We got like some cool ones here. Land of the Minotaur, Creeping Terror. Uh, Lurkers is here, which is a uh, Roberta Finley film. A uh, great edition for screen, of Scream Factory, but I like Scream. Finger Center, but it Lurkers. And uh, another one, actually, that I have. The Hearse is on here. Oh, Psycho 3 is actually not bad. Like, it's directed by, by uh, it's got a little bit sleazier, but a little more slashery than Psycho 2, which Richard Franklin directed Psycho 2. Psycho 3 was actually directed by Anthony Perkins himself. I wish they would have gone with the original premise for Psycho 3, uh, but uh, they didn't. They went, like, uh, with a straightforward way. Psycho 3 is definitely it's full all the way in Slasher. Psycho 2 is a great sequel. And uh, Richard Franklin, of course, he did Patrick, uh, which is an Australian film. Uh, he's an Australian director. And, of course, he made Road Games, which uh, helped him get like the name the uh, Australian Alfred Hitchcock and got him to uh, do uh, Psycho 2. All right, so we got here After Dark Thrillers, 8-movie collection. I do like these. Uh, this is this one is a re-release. This is by Mill Creek, BS, BCI, put this one in originally. And... Uh, some cool stuff on here. You got like nightclub, double exposure, hot target, pick up, click the the calendar girl, blue money is on here as well. Which I have the, I think the X rated edition of that now from from Vinegar Syndrome. Did was that X rated edition? I can't, I haven't watched it yet, but uh, I know it was part of their their sale, their Valentine sale. Uh, this is another one of the cool ones. This one, these next two are actually from BCI, so they're the original releases of these. This is the uh, Driving Cult Classics 8 film collection. What's cool about these is they'll, they don't say there's any features on them. Uh, some of the, a lot of these here, you got to look, but they have like commentaries on here too. Uh, they don't tell you at all. You just got to like hit check with the audio. Or like So go online when, if you get one of these and see which, one, which movies have commentaries. And these are like actually pretty good quality too. Uh, and this one here is, you know, Terrified, The Safe Hitler's Brain, Mad Men of Mandoras, uh, Bloodlust, The Hearse. The Hearse on a lot of these. And uh, next up is a really cool one, Volume 4, which is my favorite. We got, like, stuff like Don't Answer the Phone, The Van, Young Graduates, Chain Gang Women, The Specialists. And we've gone through all of those. I can put those back into one more shelf if you'd like to do that. Like, we can do one more. You want to do one more? You gotta let me know though. Vince, that's like a remake so bad. <laughs> and because of Vince Vaughn, actually. Uh, so I'll be right back.
Not quite as neat, but here we go. It'd be neat when I get them done. <laughs> All right. So here we go. There is, uh, next up is Ghosts of Mars. Uh, okay. Uh, not my favorite. Uh, John Carpenter one. Um, follow that up with uh, True Time Crimes, which I actually do like. I actually really like this one. If you haven't seen it, definitely wanted to look into. You have a friend that prefers the Psycho Remix to the original? Heresy! But then again, considering the stuff I like, I can't say too much, can I? This is, uh, well, read a bit of copy of Rec 2, which I have the Rec series. So, uh, that's, uh, one's probably going to go to my kids, actually. Let the right one in. This, I think this is the, is this the original remake. Uh, do, 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 do. This is the original, I think. Yeah, this is the original, let the right one in. Rec 2 is your least favorite? I'm trying to remember which one now. I got to rewatch them. This is Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. I'm not joking. This is actually a thing. Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. It ain't all good in the hood. Lots of features on here. Because you need them. Wes Craven's Chiller. We kind of, well, he didn't direct it. He produced it. But there you go. Wes Craven's Chiller. Time Cop. Uh, I like the movie Time Cop. I however did not like the next movie that I'm going to show you. It's not a good movie. I, I own it. And it is definitely a, a different type of film. So uh, this is I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. If you think this is going to be like any of the other No I Know Did Last Summer films, like the first two, no. Um, there's had a hilarious death, and I do mean it's a hilarious death in here, uh, with a, on a skateboard. Uh, actually, only really neat thing I can tell you about this film is that uh, Don Shanks, who plays Michael Mars in Halloween 5, actually plays the uh, the killer in this one. I did like Music of the Heart, and I'm really glad that he was able to do something outside the horror genre and get like get like uh, kudos and credit for it. Next up is From Dust to Dawn. Again, love that movie. And I picked this one up because I definitely had to have it. I remember the series. And this is the actual complete series is Kindred the Embraced. So I, I actually like this. I, don't, I haven't seen it in a long time. Maybe it's not as good as I remember it, but I, I think Spelling, like it's an Aaron Spelling show, actually. But I'm pretty sure, I think this is the entire series. Because it didn't last very long. Let's say one, two. So original saga, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. It's a whole series. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not a... <laughs> uh, the Prophecy Uprising. I'm not a big fan of the Prophecy films. I really got to like rewatch them, I guess. Uh, but I was never big into them. But I always pick up like fr franchise films like because I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to want to go back. and Especially for my channel. I'm, when I'm doing like Halloween and stuff like that, I do try to get through like different franchises because everybody does Halloween. Everybody does Friday the 13th. I want to be able to do stuff like like the Prophecy franchise and like the, the Warlock franchises and stuff like that. Uh, the Crow, I'll act eventually do this as a franchise as well. Which comment? Was Craven didn't originally want to direct horror films. Well, you know, he kind of, this kind of became his thing, but uh, I don't think anybody goes and wanting to direct, like look at John Carpenter, he wanted to direct Westerns. And in a way he did, in a sneaky way he did. This is not a good film, but hey, maybe it's better than I remember. Is this, anybody remember this one? Tara Reid, Edward Furlong, David, David Boreanaz. Okay. Uh, all right. Prophecy films. I think they do. I think they got like a cheap, um, I don't, not on a, on a really good Blu-ray, a Cinematheque. I thought like either Echo Bridge or, some, or Mill Creek or some company like that put them out. I, have, I don't think there's like a really good release of the uh, Prophecy films out there. Uh, they do have a, a big fan cut following and I haven't seen them like since I initially watched them so uh in order for me to say I wasn't really big into the uh into them was uh yeah that's that's not it's not a really fair assessment since it's been so long don't until Christmas I was really glad to get the uh the Mondo Macabre edition of this one so cool the Alphas Crows equals uh, this is one that I really like I wish I had more of these actually uh this is uh the Grindish Trailer Classics. Now, the first two to the Crow at, uh, what's his name, Vincent, 
well, not to Nafra, somebody Vincent Perez or something like that uh, in it. And uh, that wasn't very good. That was actually worse than that one. Um, but really good. I love like trailer tapes. And this, see, even though it's a DVD and I've got trailer Blu rays, I always call these trailer tapes because remember back in the day doing that. It's Alive, classic Larry Cohen film. Everybody should have this. Of course, I got the, the collection with It's Alive, Lives Again, and Honor the Alive from Screen Factory. Another uh, a Stuart Gordon film. Three of the Guns. Oh, I'm jealous of you, Raymond. I, I need more of those. It's the Gun. I actually like this one. I'm a H.P. Lovecraft fan, though. Uh, speak, talking about remakes that are actually really good, uh, this is The Crazies. Uh, I guess this is more uh, relevant right now, today, society. Uh, but I actually like this. I love, love the original film. Basket Case was by Frank Hennenlauter, who uh, did a, like uh, Society and uh, Brain Damage as well. And of course, Frank Hennenlauter, <clears throat> which if you don't have Frank Hennenlauter, get Frank Hennenlauter. It's really fun. But The Crazies, really enjoyed that one. This is one time when a particular color cover doesn't mean it's a bad film. Ah, this is what, not why, this is not, not with the other ones. Another After Dark one, Wicked Little Things. Larry Cohen did a, he didn't do the, he did a, he did It's Alive. He did the stuff and like Q, the Winged Serpent and all that. And of course this is the hearse in the favorite edition from, for Scalder because it is your amazing, beautiful snapper case. I got to upgrade to the Vinegar Syndrome Edition of that one. Like, not even joking, I really do have to upgrade that one. Okay, these are kind of cool. Speaking of good old Wes Craven, here's one. Here's a, here's a Craven film that not enough people talk about, and that's Red Eye. I really like Red Eye. Uh, Cillian Murphy does a great job in this film. Uh, Rachel Adams, right? Rachel McAdams, too, yeah. Excellent film. 13 Ghosts, of course, I have this one on Blu-ray from uh, Indicator 2. Oh, yeah, I know. I keep looking at those Delirium Driving uh, releases that Umbrella put out, and I, I want them all. Um, I don't have any of them yet, but uh, they're on my, like, I've got, like, I go into Amazon all the time, and I do up, like, lists of movies that I want. And the Umbrella de <laughs> Delirium, the Driving Delirium ones are on every one of those lists. I do have this Grindest movie here somewhere. This is the remake of Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Not as good as the original Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. It's okay. And now coming to the ones that I got for like 10 cents. I'm not, uh, well this one, these next two I got for 10 cents. <clears throat> and this was a uh, kind of just a cool cheesy like, you know, collection. You can see not even open up. I was at like one of those uh, sales those, uh, that my record store has where they'll put like stuff outside and they'll have all blue, all DVDs for 10 cents and Blu-rays be like 25 cents and that type of thing. So I picked this up, you know, The Terror, Lady Frankenstein, King of the Zombies, just some cool cheesy stuff. And this one was right next to it, and I could not uh, miss out on this because it was a platinum one, and platinum's no longer in a uh, company around anymore. So it's got Monstrosity, Black Dragons, you know, the what's that, Death Rattle, Death, D The Devil's Partner, and Night the Blood Beast. So fun cheesy stuff. Now these, I, I was, this one was from Walmart. This is Subspecies 1, 2, and 3. I do have some subspecies movies on Blu-ray as well. But the next two was actually super stoked to pick up uh, because of the film that they had on them. So this is the Advantage Collection, and this was put up by BCI. Uh, this is Demons, Vampires, and Ghosts. And they have some cool films here. Like, like remember that one I mentioned before, Skinned Alive? That one's on here. Uh, Witch House. They say Witch House 3, but I don't think it's Witch House 3. I think it's one of the later Witch House films. Um, Dead and Rotting, which was another one that came out from, I think, Tempe Video at one point. Uh, Hell Asylum, Bone Setter. I, I used to own all those on the single releases, so it was really cool to get those. And I picked up this one, too, as well, Demons and Witches, which was a really good one. And it had, like, two witchcraft films on here. And these are older witchcraft ones. These are newer witchcraft ones. I mean, Witchcraft 11 and Witchcraft 12, so bad ones. Uh, but I love bad films, so uh, I, I was super excited to, uh, to get these two releases when I got them. Because I like really bad cheesy stuff, that's why. Um, I've got an eclectic taste. 
This is Ouija Origin of Evil, way better than, than the original Ouija. Uh, where's this original Ouija? Am I thinking? No, this is a good one, right? There's two. One's not good, one is good. I'm trying to remember which one that one is. Uh, Stoker, which actually is a decent one, worth checking out. Uh, the classic uh, VCI release for children shouldn't play with dead things. Uh, I do need to upgrade this release. I think there's a Blu-ray right there. Uh, if there isn't, there should be. Uh, is it a good film? It's not particularly a good film. Uh, definitely a lot more can be done with this. I got to speak to Tom Savini at a convention. Um, and Tom Savini wanted to really remake this and make a good version of it. And I really think he could. Uh, classically great film is Mute Witness. And if you have not seen Mute Witness, definitely check it out. And if you're here now and you still haven't hit the like button, please do. Because <clears throat> it helps people find my channel. It is definitely not about Bram Stoker. I'm not telling you about it though because it's a good film and it's worth checking out. I think that was a classic. In Mute Witness, was he really? I can't remember now. It's been a long time since I watched it. I think you're right though. Because that's the one with, uh... yeah, you're right. It was Alec. I forgot he was in that film. Good call, by the way. Uh, such a good film. It's such a simple premise, too. Like she sees a snuff film being being done, and she can't see mute, so. In the car, right? Yeah. The Haunting. Excellent ghost story. Classic film. From, the, from a producer of Dog Soldiers. Nightwolf. This is a film that has people in it. Gemma Atkinson is in this, so I, I, this is probably why I picked it up. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it, uh, but it's got Gemma Atkinson in it, so that's probably why I got it, to be honest with you. And of course, I have both of these, because these are definitely worth having. Crimson River and like uh, the uh, the sequel, Crimson River Angels. What's it? Angel, on, Angel of the Apocalypse. I like these. They're kind of like... French, say, detective murder ones. I like those. And Dog Soldiers, because I don't have the Blu-ray edition because Scream Factory doesn't sell this in Canada. And the last handful, because it's really dusty down here tonight, bring these movies out, and my throat is going on me. There is Warlock, which I really like, and I got the, uh, I recommend getting the Blu-ray edition of that one. Uh, and there is Warlock and of the Innocents with Bruce Payne. So you got Julian Sands in the first two and Bruce Payne in the third one. Uh, one that I want to get a Blu-ray release, I think I think I might be the only fan of this film, but the In Crowd. I actually like the In Crowd. Um, it's very like very glitzy, very you know, like plastic people, very pretty people, but uh, it's kind of what it's supposed to be. And a good cast in the In Crowd as well. Uh, definitely one worth checking out, checking out if you haven't seen it. This is the original Ouija. This sucked, but uh, God did anyway, because I got to have them both. Victor Crowley, this is really good. I don't have Racerhead. I need a Racerhead. Uh, this is a really good, like, uh, he came back, he brought, made this one, like, years after he made the originals, and it was a big surprise. They went to see the film, didn't know what they were going to see. <sighs> you got to be in a special mood to watch a Tim Ritter film. But here's Tim Ritter screaming for Sandy, and otherwise, Truth or Dare, Part 3. Yep, it's the fourth Hatchet film. It's actually pretty good, and it's a really good feature right on there, on like how down and you know, depressed it became after making the Hatchet, after after he got out of making films for a while. Really great feature out. If you if you got the Blu-ray or the DVD and you haven't checked out the, the special features, definitely check it out. And last but not least for tonight anyway, is Night of the Living Dead, the remake with directed by Tom Savini. All right, there you go. I'm Aaron. This is my movie library, uh, which I'm going to slowly get through, I think. We're going to be doing more part two. If you guys want to do part two of the horror collection, if you like this, let me know. And we'll do part two of that tomorrow night. Uh, there's lots more to go through, DVDs and Blu-rays. So lot. it's, uh, it's going to take up two or three videos. So if you enjoy this and you've enjoyed doing this video, uh, definitely let me know. It is like, share, subscribe. Um, you can share it on social media if you can 
let people know that my channel's out there, especially right now when TV is not like TV and sporting events and all that. There's not just there's just not a lot going on. Uh, YouTube kind of soldiers on. Uh, I want to thank everybody that came in tonight. I want to thank all my Patreon subscribers because I don't do that enough. Thank you so much. That is the Russmar box that I will show you that one next time, maybe Ra Ra Ramon, if you're there. Ramon, did I get that right? Um, but I will see you tomorrow because my voice is going. Same bat time, same bat channel. It is time for tea. Have a great evening. You guys, cult guys, you rock.